Okay, thank you, Anthony, for inviting me to speak with the Business Aviation Roundtable today. It's a pleasure to be here um, at this end of the year. Let me just uh, summarize my thoughts on where we are with the economy and how the economic outlook looks uh, for the coming year. Um, my, my overall view is that you've probably seen that, uh, at least in the world of stock markets, if not on Main Street, uh, it's quite bullish. And it has been since the announcement about the uh, Pfizer vaccines and the other vaccines, as well as the, uh, um, the, the news that uh, President-elect Biden has had won the election and has now been ratified. Um, a big driver for this bullishness is the low interest rates, which the central banks, both here in Canada, as well as in the United States, have indicated is going to be with us for some time. We are going to continue to see the central bank in Canada, as well as in uh, Europe and the US, um, actively buying government bonds to try and push down interest rates with a focus more on longer term interest rates. But we're looking at least two years of low interest rates. Um, we have uh, continued stimulus, which came out of our recent economic update that is directed at supporting the economy, those who have been most affected. Um, and in the United States, we're, we're likely to get a, a, another stimulus package passed, although smaller than what many might have hoped. Um, I, I do always come back to the view that uh, the higher debt is going to lead to a bill in the future. And I think people, um, despite their very high savings rates, have to anticipate that down the road, there will be higher taxes. But having said that, the economic outlook is much brighter for 2021 and people are seeing a very strong rebound, particularly in the United States, a little weaker in Canada, but also globally, this is a, a global phenomenon. Um, and in from a financial markets point of view, it means that people are moving out of the safety of the United States and moving into um, other opportunities to earn higher returns or higher yield, as we say, we call it the search for yield. Um, and that'll mean moving into, um, say, lower rated or corporate bonds, sometimes called junk bonds or emerging markets, and out of the US dollar. Um, now, the, unfortunately, the outlook for the aviation sector is, is going to remain weak. I saw at the IATA um, AGM, they compared it to being back to passenger levels last seen in 2003. Although uh, cargo and uh, vaccines are providing some bright spots. So I'm just going to pop, pop through a few slides um, and, then, and then open up for questions. So um, as I've said in, in various presentations over the past uh, nine months, there, there are three phases and we're in the third phase, which is the recovery. Um, it, it seems that uh, we will not be looking at a recession or at least not a broad recession because the economy is bouncing back, although from a very low level. But there are many people, let's not forget, who are still unemployed, who lost their jobs, and we're not going to be back at the unemployment levels or the very low uh, unemployment levels that we saw for uh, at least a year or two. Um, and what's really driving the, the recovery is that government stimulus and those low interest rates. Um, it is a very, um, um, uh, a very bleak picture when you look at the second wave of the pandemic um, with the number of cases globally rising, particularly um, the strong uh, daily counts in the United States. Um, we have seen uh, a second wave already crest and start to recover in Europe. Um, you can see here that Italy actually was, was on a very high trajectory and has fallen, as has uh, Germany. Um, Canada's, Canada's second wave is is picking up. This is looking at number of cases per million. So we're, we're far below the level of the United States, um, but still it is rising. Um, and what I think we see from this slide is looking at the bottom at Japan, India, and I don't even bother showing China, is that there are countries around the world that have managed to control the virus using very, um, you know, using a combination of technology as well as strong health measures which uh, is, bodes well for air travel uh, globally. An another positive is that the, the, the fatality rate, as high as it has been, remains far below what people had originally anticipated. We see it was around 4% at the start of pandemic. It's now down 2% and it is falling um, with most of the cases now coming with younger people who are not hospitalized and who can recover quite quickly. 
So this is what's behind this kind of remarkable uh, bull market or rise in the equity markets, both in the United States and the top slide and in, in Canada in the bottom. Um, you would never have guessed that this would be a great year for the US stock market, but it is actually up on the course of the year by 14%. And uh, despite that very sharp drop in uh, March and you know, the, the market is actually 9% above the peak it was at early um, in late February. In Canada, not quite as strong a year with only the market up 2.6%. Uh, but given the year we had, I would say that that's a phenomenal performance. What's driving it is really the news on vaccines with, um, you know, the, the number of vaccines that have now been approved uh, growing day by day. We've seen uh, vaccinations start here in Canada as well as the United States. Uh, following uh, the news in the UK last week. There are, um, although our attention is focused on Pfizer and maybe on the Moderna vaccines, there are vaccines also being rolled out in Russia and China, which we don't hear much about. Um, and so it is a global phenomenon that we're seeing quite positive news on the vaccine front um, from many different efforts. Um, when it comes more to um, uh, factors that would affect the aviation industry directly. Uh, at the top, I have oil prices. Oil prices having uh, plummeted in early in, this, in the pandemic through a kind of a technical factor that led to that kind of negative, temporary negative spike in uh, interest rates. The, um, the price of oil has flattened. Um, and on the right, you see that the, the, the price of jet fuel very much tracks the price of either West Texas Intermediate or Brent, which are kind of the benchmarks in, in, uh, in the United States and Europe, um, and that the, the jet fuel price has, has stabilized um, as well, which is, is unfortunate that it's recovered. Um, part of what's driving this is the attempt by oil producers, um, the, the so-called group of OPEC plus, which includes Russia, to try and limit production and keep those oil prices around $45 to $50 a barrel. Um, but offsetting that is the continued low interest rates, which is good if you're financing aircraft, if you're financing your business, if you have leverage, um, you know, both interest rates as well as uh, borrowing rates are, are, are low and very low by historical standards and continue to be low, uh, below one half of 1%. Um, when we, we turn to the economic outlook, I, I mentioned that the outlook is, is going to be quite strong uh, globally. That's in both the advanced economies as well as the emer uh, emerging market economies. You can see that after a drop of around 5.8% uh, in advanced economies in 2020, um, we're going to get a rebound of 3.9% in the next year. This drop is actually lower than what was really originally anticipated in the April to June kind of period. So the, the, the bottom has not been as low and the recovery is happening quicker. And uh, there is quite a bit going on in China and, and uh, emerging markets as well. They're, they're rebounding very strongly. Now, you, you may have participated in IATA's uh, 76 AGM where you got a kind of an overview of your industry. Obviously, passenger travel is still at around 10% of its levels uh, despite uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas um, with really... Uh, the only bright spot being cargo um, and um, transportation of vaccines, uh, as well as all the, uh, the, the uh, shipping and of not only PPE, but also like just uh, e-commerce that's, that's going on. You know, the IATA's website does have some sort of dire statistics here shown in red for what's happening to the industry. And it's these losses that I think are really facing, um, which are bringing us to now the final point, which is how, how are policymakers, how is our government uh, addressing the needs of this industry? In the, in the um, fall economic update, there was um, no good news for major airlines, although there was more positive news for smaller regional airlines, as well as uh, maybe fixed base operators. But uh, it is nowhere near as, um, as much support as the industry needs. Um, and I think that part of the problem is this, this tussle or this tug of war with uh, consumers who are demanding uh, to be refunded for flights that were canceled. And once this can be uh, put aside,
hopefully with like the new protocols that we're seeing, such as um, uh, have been introdu introduced in Alberta, where you can be tested upon arrival in the airport, um, we're going to see a, a kind of a return of passenger traffic um, to match the recovery in cargo volumes. So let's cross our fingers and hope for a brighter 2021 and let's put 2020 in our rear view mirror, as it were. <laughs> I agree, Mike. Well, listen, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to provide that outlook. And maybe I want to expand a couple of things that pulled for me, uh, especially the comment about higher debt equaling taxes. I agree. And that's something that we certainly want to watch out for. And it kind of goes to a theme when you talked about stimulus packages and that, that last slide about government policy and supporting aviation, in your view, uh, even though we've spent the dollars that we have as a country, what are your thoughts then uh, on recognizing the air industry support? Is there a view you could share with respect to how the globe has, other countries across the globe have supported their air industry? Any of you? That yeah, I, I would, you know, Anthony, it's interesting because we can learn a lot by looking at what's happening in Europe. Um, and in Europe, uh, we obviously saw national carriers um, receiving uh, support. Um, some would call them bailouts um, with first um, Air Canada, KLM, sorry, Air France, KLM, and, and then uh, with Lufthansa. And I think this is a recognition that um, national carriers are an essential service and need to be preserved. Um, in Canada, we haven't seen that. Uh, obviously, we had the acquisition of WestJet, which happened as the pandemic was unrolling. Um, so that may have clouded the picture a little bit with uh, that new ownership. But you know, we're now seeing uh, the cutback of regional uh, routes, which are vital, um, vital lines of transportation and connection with remote communities. I think that the, the government is going to be uh, recognizing that they need to, um, they need to support um, services to remote parts of the country. Um, major cities, of course, are, are always going to be hubs. And I think to the extent that we can get these uh, vaccination uh, protocols into place in the airports, um, I think people will become more comfortable when start to travel again, which is gonna help. But to, to get through this trough, this kind of valley of death, this, this um, loss of cash or this cash burn, I think the government is going to have to step in uh, to support the industry more. Um, and uh, they pro I, I hope that they will. No, I appreciate that perspective. In fact, later uh, this afternoon, we've got a PHAC senior leadership uh, Bridgette, uh, she's the VP there. And one of the topics is certainly related to testing because, we, you know, one of the things we face as is issues, of course, is getting across just our own country is difficult because we've got quarantine requirements and we don't have effective testing programs in place. So this limits both the airline side and then also us with business aviation, our ability to get around just our own country, never mind the globe. That's right. I mean, this, this, this provincial federal kind of tussle um, should be put aside. We should have kind of a national system um, that's implemented at airports across the country, irrespective of where they're located, so that uh, people, people get accustomed to the new regime. I mean, you remember when the Nexus was introduced and, and you know, digital ID and passports? No, now that we, ha we, we would expect this to be a kind of a federal jurisdiction, and we hope that, uh, you know, vaccinations as well as having a, you know, a vaccination passport, hopefully digitally. I mean, I'll, I'm hoping that we're not going to have pieces of paper that it's going to be on our phones. And it will be, you know, a, a registry where we can just scan a QR code or um, and to show that we've been vaccinated and that we're, free, we're, we're safe to travel. I agree. You know, it's funny. We've we've been asking those same questions uh, in particular. How does the government view quarantine when we'll have passengers and crew members entering the country already being able to demonstrate they have in fact have uh, the virus or rather the vaccine has already been been administered so that'll be an interesting question to see how it how it develops yeah and we've seen uh, you know uh, countries like hong kong for example have have really got a they figured out how to do this you know uh when you arrive at their airport uh you're tested you um you receive um Obviously, there's, there's, there's questions in North America about privacy, but I think we have to agree that when it comes to public safety, being willing to, to have our names into a, a, 
a system that's maybe only kept, maybe only visible to health authorities and to border uh, officials, but being able to track us and, and keep track of our, our health in order to benefit other, uh, other citizens, other, um, uh, other travelers is, I think, been shown in other countries to be a big plus. Perfect. Well, shifting gears a bit, I, I wanted to uh, to bring you on and ask a couple questions. I know that you, in your work, have been very focused on fintech, Canada, yeah. you know, modern. Yes, that's that's my my other hat. You know, my I'll put on my jester hat if we're going to talk about you know fintech <laughs> well, topics. You might need the jester hat for, for where we're going to go. So, in particular, I want to ask the story about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Yes. There's a lot out there, but. Your view, the economy, is this cryptocurrency, is it a store of value? Will it replace gold? Where do you see uh, coins, altcoins, cryptocurrency, however you want to frame that, where do you see that fitting in, whether it's within Canada or across the globe, uh, as, as our operators look to entertain new business, let's say? So by cryptocurrency, we mean a, a digital money that is uh, recorded in a public um, ledger or uh, bookkeeping system, if you like, and it is made secure using cryptography. That's cryptocurrency. This, uh, it obviously started with Bitcoin. We've seen uh, the launch of many other, um, many other copycat coins, if you like. Um, and now this is, this is like an, a digital innovation that has the promise to provide a means of payment that is global or universal, that is not controlled by a centralized authority. So um, we've now seen like that PayPal, uh, some of the credit card companies are starting to accept uh, Bitcoin as well as other forms of cryptocurrencies. Um, and central banks and governments are responding by looking into digital versions of their own currency. So they call it central bank digital currencies. All that means is that we may have a, an electronic version of the Canadian dollar, the US may have an electronic version of the US dollar. And I think that it, what it means is that people are going to be able to pay much more easily. Um, we're not going to be using cash. Um, and the, the fact that we have competition from outside of the public sector, from these uh, independent cryptocurrencies, has been positive one for, for pushing forward innovation. Now, the original coin, Bitcoin, has, you know, as it's moved, uh, one Bitcoin is now over $20,000, uh, a level it hadn't reached since December of 2017. It may not be practical for you to be using Bitcoin to pay for your airfare. However, there are alternatives such as Bitcoin Cash, other, other cryptocurrencies that maybe fixed base operators and others should, should consider looking into the technology that would be required to accept this as a means of payment. And maybe it's, um, it's, it's through PayPal, maybe it's um, through third party payment providers, but I think you're gonna see people wanting to use these cryptocurrencies alongside digital versions of our, our traditional money. Oh, it's Whether it's a store of value, however, <laughs> um, it, it has been extremely volatile. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, some of these cryptocurrencies do not have anything backing them. So it's not like gold. It, it is not like real estate. It is not something physical and tangible that you own. Um, it, some of these currencies, you have to be very cautious they, you have to understand why they were created and what we call their use case. Mm -hmm. Some of them are like a subway token that will get you a service. You buy it and you, you use it to, to, to acquire the service. Others are, are simply a speculative interest instrument. Oh, it's everybody was getting into and issuing coins. I mean, I've seen everything from acquiring virtual landscapes so that you can claim this domain of like a... Uh, <laughs> An online VR environment that you acquire the land, the property. It's it's tremendous. I mean, I, I remember a story we're flying with an operator uh, in 2017 and making that suggestion that they should consider at least what does or how could, uh, whether it's deposits or outright ownership, I mean, perhaps you'd start with small, but the price appreciation from 17 until now has been quite astounding. So no, I appreciate that perspective. So in closing, I think I'd like to go back to that idea of you know, technology in the Canadian banking space, it's something yeah. that you're very passionate about. And I think, yeah. you know, we are often, whether it's on the aviation side, we're trying to push government to adopt, hey, let's let's look at these best practices. Let's take a first principles thinking, what is right versus who is right? Let's move the agenda forward. So I think the same sort of question exists to you. It's what can we do in Canada or what should Canada do about 
our banking system finance. I think that's an important part of how we play in a global role and it's how businesses interact. But are there a couple points that you think uh, our government should follow with respect to modernizing things? Yes, I mean, our, our government is, is kind of um, dragging its feet a little bit. Um, and the, 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 the argument they make is that we have a sound and efficient financial system, so let's not do anything to undermine it. And Canada would rather be a fast follower rather than being the first mover so that we can sort of learn from other countries. But what we are seeing in Europe, what we're seeing in Asia, is we're seeing innovations that basically make people's financial lives easier, simpler, more convenient, and they, they get their financial services uh, for lower cost than we do uh, in many cases in Canada. And as a result, these innovations are, are, are borderless. They're finding their way into Canada. And what, what you know, the, 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 the members of the association are gonna see is that people are increasingly gonna be using their phones to manage their finances. And it's not only gonna be banking with the big banks, it's gonna be using kind of non-traditional um, FinTech or financial technology company uh, applications. PayPal is, you know, when PayPal first came along, people kind of scratched their heads and now we just accept it for what it is. We're going to see similar kind of customer offerings. Um, another one that is going to soon be uh, coming our way is digital identity. We're hopefully going to be doing away with, you know, showing a, a piece of plastic uh, when you get onto a plane because let's face it, this, this item here, um, it has a barcode, it, it has a QR code. Like, why do we physically need this when we could mm -hmm. at some point have it on our phones so that, um, and it can be secure and safe. So there's lots of ways that we can use technology to um, benefit for, for people in your industry as well, access to loans, access to loans online through portals, through non-traditional providers may be a cheaper, quicker uh, alternative for getting financing and uh, for paying for vacations. People are gonna be able to finance at point of sale uh, their vacation rather than you know, um, maybe using a credit card, they may use alternative forms of financing that are available. And so more and more, we're gonna see financial services bundled with non-financial products whether it's travel, whether it's uh, consumption, whether it's uh, you know, other, other things that are just part of our lives, we're gonna have finance, loans, deposits, investments kind of offered insurance at the same point. And it's not gonna be a bank that you will see at the front. There may be a bank in the background, but you're gonna just see Amazon, you're just gonna see Expedia, you're just gonna see Shopify. And um, we're, we're, the banks are going to are, are terrified of losing that direct connection with their customers. But that's, that's almost inevitable. On that note, Michael, I appreciate it. I mean, what a great message to think about going into 2021, that sense of optimism yeah. that there are some exciting prospects for but both our operators, our associate businesses, what they can undertake. I think that is the message that sends us off into 2021. So Michael, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to give this association a view of the economy, what it's been, where it's going. And I very much appreciate the discussion. Though those other areas, cryptocurrency, the idea of fintech, uh, I think it's uh, a very interesting, insightful message. And I think our operators, associates, they'll, they'll, they'll view it positively into 2021. Okay, well, stay safe and uh, keep flying. And uh, I hope that you all have a, a wonderful holiday. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it.